Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, uh, yeah, I'm in the park and I am on crappy audio. I'm using my AirPods because they're the only thing I have. Uh, because, yes, big news, we have seen uh, an optical counterpart to a gravitational wave event. So rewind to August 17th, 2017, the uh, Fermi Gamma Ray Burst Monitor observed an event which it labelled GRB 120817A. So a gamma ray burst is essentially a flash of gamma rays in the sky. They've been seen since like the 1960s. They were first observed by a satellite that was originally set up to find nuclear weapons tests and they started finding these random gamma ray bursts which turned out to be extra galactic in origin. So uh, this, space, this spacecraft has been in orbit since like 2009 I think and whenever it finds something it tries to localize it it's not hugely accurate it gets it down to about 30 square degrees of the sky but it's designed so that it immediately notifies the rest of the world so that interested astronomers can follow up and perhaps localize the event to somewhere some smaller part of the sky so it you know put out its alert people started looking for it then about six minutes later LIGO was reviewing its data for the last six minutes and it noticed a possible event. They labeled it GW170817, right? That, um, well, basically, that event actually happened before the gamma ray burst, but because of the, the processing time, it took them six minutes to put out their alert. Uh, also, in the last few months, they've brought a new part into the LIGO experiment. They've teamed up with Virgo. Virgo is a, an Italian project, again, with their own telescope. Now that they have three of them, it means that they can localize the, localize the origin, basically, by using trilateral relation to, uh, you know, to find out based upon the different timings. It also means that they're slightly more sensitive than they used to be. And this is important because this event is weaker than previous uh, events that have been observed. So, uh, of course, having two events at the same time meant suddenly everybody was really interesting, uh, interested. They started trying to localize the source and unfortunately the prediction put it in the southern hemisphere and many of the telescopes that would normally be able to see it were unable to capture it. So it took about 10 hours for an observatory in Chile to finally localize it to the galaxy NGC 4993, a galaxy which is about 130 million light years ago. So although we only observed it in August this year, uh, it happened 130 million years ago, basically before T-Rex or any of those other dinosaurs were hanging around. Because of this uh, historic event, lots of telescopes ended up looking at it. It was observed in every single way we can, we know. They had gamma rays, x-rays, UV, visible, infrared, radio, they were all providing data on the nature of this, collecting information. At first, the light was blue, you know, very blue, it had a lot of x-rays, gamma rays, ultraviolet, but then it faded over time into the red and into the infrared over a couple of weeks. One thing, notably, that wasn't observed was a neutrino burst. A couple of different neutrino observatories checked their data and there was no information, no suggestion that this was correlated. So, I mean, the upshot of this is that this uh, gravity wave observation and the optical counterpart has thousands of astronomers involved. It's kind of crazy to see the long lists of authors on these papers. Now, analysis of the event suggests that this is probably because of two neutron stars merging. So these would be neutron stars, maybe one and a half solar masses each. And as they orbit each other, they're so heavy, they gener generate gravity waves. And over the last few seconds, the last few minutes, the amount of energy they're emitting is high enough, large enough to be observed by the LIGO system. Um, at, towards the end, the observer, ob sorry, the orbital period is like literally tiny fractions of a second. They're orbiting each other hundreds of times per second. And that's when they're generating the most uh, energy. And as they get down closer and closer still, they drop inside the Roche limit and the tidal forces tear the objects apart. And we get material thrown off, partly through, our, through polar jets, and the core of the object probably collapses into a black hole. Although this is not guaranteed, we will find out more over time. 
Now, the analysis with, from the various uh, observations of spectra shows that the material being thrown out of the pole probably wasn't thrown directly at us, probably is about 30 degrees off axis. So the amount of light we see was a lot less as if we, as if we had actually been on the pole. Also, the spectra suggests that we have very, uh, the, the material is rich in heavy elements, things like uh, gold and platinum, stuff out in the lathanide series. So that is because we've probably seen uh, nuclear syn nucleosynthesis via the R process. There's so many neutrons being thrown around at fractions of the speed of light that they are colliding with each other and forming heavier and heavier elements. So this is actually a mechanism by which the heavy elements that form Earth the planets and us could have been formed. I mean, there's still some debate as to how nucleosynthesis can create these heavy elements and spread them throughout space, because as we see, neutron stars uh, are formed by supernova. So if uh, supernova are forming neutron stars, what's how is the material getting out there? So yeah, the uh, event happened, well, the event happened about 130 million years ago. The galaxy itself has not been forming stars for you know at least a billion years, so it's quite possible that this, uh, the stars that formed this, you know, turned themselves into neutron stars billions of years ago, and they've been spending all this time slowly spiraling down until just earlier this month we finally saw them collapsing into this amazing high energy event where we formed a black hole and the very seeds of matter that make the universe work for us. Yeah, it's a truly awesome observation and you know, we'll find out more over time as more data is observed and more data is analyzed. And uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. I'm Scott Manley, Fly Safe.